Welcome back YouTube. Today I'll be going over the tribe tier list for the new spell meta. The most recent season brought a ton of new minions, a lot of them interacting with spells, and I'm going to break down exactly how to play each of these tribes as well as ranking them from worst to best. I'd just like to remind you all that this list was made in collaboration with some of the current highest MR players so I can eliminate my own biases and provide you all with an objective and accurate tier list. Starting off with the worst tribe in the game, it's still mechs. Mechs have been the worst tribe for a while and Blizzard just refuses to buff them. I will say though, this is actually a really balanced meta so even the worst tribe, like in this case mechs, is still completely playable at times. There's actually two strategies with mechs right now, the death rattle strategy and the magnetic strategy. Key cards for the death rattle strategy are lighter fighter, kangors, buster, titus, with uh, lighter fighter and deflectobot being the key enablers for this tribe. This build is honestly pretty good, especially with how broken Titus's tribute is, but it is completely overshadowed by the current best tribe in the game that we'll cover later. The other strategy requires Scrapscraver mid game to enable Beatboxer, Drakari, and Utility Drone. This scaling is very powerful, but in the last couple of metas, it's just way too slow to get online, and Utility's drone's buff doesn't really help it stabilize in time. The other tribe in F tier, and remind you is still completely playable, is Kobors. Kobors is enabled by the gem generators such as Spearhide and Bookie, and to really commit to the tribe you'll definitely need either Piper or Rylak Jazzer, preferably both. This tribe really likes to stay on Tavern 4, especially now that Rugug is on Tavern 4 which is a huge deal and effectively doubles the stats on all your gems. Charlie is fine for Kobors, uh, but targeting gems on Rugug with Bookie and the 3-3 is currently much more effective scaling. And also, Bristlebok is just really dead. Like, don't play that. Moving on to the B tier, Murlox has been OP for far too long and has finally been dethroned. It turns out that nerfing base skill to only summon Murlox, which is completely deserved by the way and still a staple in Murloc builds, and also completely gutting Murky was enough for Murlocs to plummet into the B tier. The main way to play Murlocs right now is with Bream Counter and Coral Murglers with Dyrmuk, Scourfin, and Merklees being good enablers for this build. Once you have the Bream Counter, Palfin Lookout with cards such as Bran, Murkai, or Rylak is a great way to add a ton of Murlocs to your hand and make your Bream Counters really big. I do think Murky Murka is just completely dead. Like the scaling is so bad now, you really shouldn't go for it. Like, but Gurgle is just more stats than Murky most of the times now. Our next tribe in B tier are Dragons. Dragons is an interesting one because it's either really good or really bad. The tribe is definitely enabled single-handedly by Uppy Front Drake, which is by far the strongest one drop in the game currently, and you should just pick it on turn one whenever you see it. Then sometimes you triple into into Caligos, roll into a brand, and you're going to have the best and easiest scaling of your life. Other times you'll just be missing one of these key pieces, like missing the Cali or missing the brand, and you're going to be scaling slower than RDU's APM. Okay, sorry, I couldn't resist. Anyways, Hunter of Gathers, Warpwing, and Ignition Specialists are all good dragons to scale, but you're going to need a lot of six drop discovers to really solidify the win with dragons. Our next tribe in the B tier is Undead, and there are two styles of Undead. The first one is Stat Scaling Undead, enabled by a Grave Gobbler opener, where you have a big Grave Gobbler ready, building around KT and Morose. The game plan is to repeatedly consume and resummon your Morose that give your Undead permanent stats. Pair this with cards such as Titus and maybe Primal Staff, and you can actually scale pretty fast. Admittedly, I've never pulled off this comp before, but I'd imagine the best undeads to scale are KT and Mergul. The next type of undead is Token Undead, and this style is definitely enabled by Sore Loser or Early Anubrak. Mummifier, Handless Forsaken, and Titus are staples in this build, and you can use the Grave Robber card to turn Mummifier into Permanent Reborn. KT also isn't a bad inclusion in this build, to repeatedly proc a Nubrek as well. 
but that's not everything you can do with Undead. You can go for the Eternal Knight build, which is enabled by Eternal Knight Opener. Basically, you'll leave a bunch of board space open to destroy and resummon Eternal Summoners and Golden Knights. Finally, you start proccing the Mummifier with your KT to give them all reborn, and your board should just be repeatedly resummoning 100 100 Eternal Knights over and over again. It's pretty strong. Menagerie was pretty affected by some of the nerfs in the last balance patch, so they're going down into the B tier. There are two ways to play Menagerie, the first being the Phalanx variation. Key cards for this build are KT, Cultist, Titus, and Kangors, with whatever good Menagerie units to fill out your board. This comp has been getting worse and worse over time because Phalanx literally got nerfed from a 7-7 to a 5-5 and now it's a 4-4. But I've still scored a couple of wins with it. The second comp is the Nala variation of the comp which was also heavily affected by the nerf to every single spell generator. So it's actually pretty hard to enable this comp now. That's why it's pretty hard to go for this comp anymore, and it's really most viable as a pivot option when you're doing the lubber strategy. Most of the pros were pretty confident in the S tier and the F tier of this tribe tier list, but actually the A tier and the B tier were pretty close, and could really go either way. With that being said, let's get straight into the A tier. And the first tribe in A tier is actually Nagas. Nagas is a tribe that I personally had a lot more success with than maybe some of the other pros, so it's a tough one to evaluate. Regardless, Refiffer and Lava Lurker is one of the freest win openers in the game, so the tribe really can't be that bad. After you've enabled Nagas with Lava Lurker, by far the strongest way to play Nagas is with Deep Blue Zesty. No, I'm just kidding. That comp is so trash. Don't play that comp ever. Lord of Gains is the true winning comp for Nagas. Thrasher is already one of the best utilities in the game with Divine Shield and in also being one of the few Venomous options that is also premium. And being able to scale it makes it just so strong. Silavaz is a beast of a spell generator for this comp and it can also discover high cost spell for free and Corrupted Mermon can make sure you don't lose on stats. But what makes this comp actually good is the spell Primal Staff, which is a spell that just doubles your stack games for that turn. The only downside to Nagas is that it's pretty inflexible, and you really can't commit to it without the Lord of Gains. Joining Nagas in the A tier are actually Demons. Demons were A tier last time, and since last time it only got slightly better. Bazaar Dealer is a really good addition to demons because it, you can buy higher tavern tier spells for free while also taking damage. Rylak Felimental is also pretty meta right now thanks to Brands Blessing and Tysis Tribute which makes shop eating strats incredibly effective. And finally, Cultus remains one of the most powerful ending units that any tribe has to offer, especially with Titus's tribute. The final reason why demons are still so strong is because it is no longer a murloc meta, and I would say murlocs are the main thing to keep this no utility tribe in check. The final tribe in the A tier are elementals. Elementals are enabled by Recycling Wraith and or Gentle Genie, and oftentimes you probably run a lease with all the free rolls you're getting. Then, the reason why elementals are so good isn't actually because of Rock Rock, but because of Master Viades. This card is just the nuts, and works well with everything Elementals wants to do. Rock Rock, Flourishing Frostling, Sandstone Drake, even Bejeweled Duelist if you're pivoting from a Lubber comp, are all premium with Master Viades. But what makes this card truly powerful compared to some of the other metas is the ability to untaunt it. And because it's often your biggest unit, it's so much easier to untaunt it with just one gold as opposed to taunting your whole board which is what you previously had to do. But elementals are still far away from the two tribes in S tier, which every pro thought were undisputably the best two tribes in the current meta. And the first one of those tribes is pirates. Pirates are great and mostly enabled by Record Smuggler or Tethys, but if you do hit one with the other in the mid game, it's so easy to just run away with the game. 
Underhanded Dealer scales a ton with this Pirate Core, and you can generate this card from the Tethys. And also, the Brand Balladist combo is just instant stabilization with like the 30 gold turns you're gonna have. Pirates is another tribe that benefited immensely from the Murlocless meta, so your units aren't just getting poisoned to death out of nowhere as much. Peggy and Courier are also extremely premium units to play with this setup. I would say Courier is better in a full pirate setup, especially if you're scaling a cleave, but Peggy is more viable in a more brand-esque comp where you're running recycling wraith and stuff, which is pretty common because as I've mentioned in previous tier lists, elementals and pirates tend to go hand in hand because both of the tribes, their objective is to scale by spending a ton of gold and rolling and spiking with brand. But basically in general, in this meta, it's so much harder to deal with one insanely big unit, and pirates, demons, and elementals all do exactly just that, which make them really great this meta. But the best tribe in the game right now is so unfair, it just makes every single summon just an extremely big unit. Beasts are currently the best tribe in the game. I will say though, at high MMR, we all thought pirates are higher cap than beasts, but I have to be fair to the meta in general because it's just so much easier to play beasts and you can't really mess it up. Like let's be honest, you just buy some cars and put them on your board and you just instantly win. Beasts are enabled by Hungry Snapdraw, Hummingbird, Slyraptor, Mama Bear type mid game, which allows you to pick up that Goldrin and snowball from there. But the main reason I think that beasts are so much better than maybe the other death battle tribes is actually Mystic Sporebat. This card can get reborn, it also works with Titus and Tribute key cards for beasts anyways, and then you can use it to basically chain Titus's Tribute which is way too broken for this tribe, maybe far in 8 spells per turn, probably get Titus's Tribute again, and just snowball out of control that way. The core of this comp is Goldrin, and the rest of your time is spent buying every single Banana Slamma, Chicken, Titus, Mega Horse, and put them onto your board. Yeah, you really can't mess this tribe up, which is definitely why you see this tribe performing so well. Easy to play tribe that caps as hard as the other APM scaling comps is a recipe for S tier, and I really hope Titus's tribute just gets nerfed soon because I think that spell is way too toxic on beasts, and it really makes me mad. Uh, let me know in the comments if you guys hate Titus' tribute as well. This is the final tribe tier list. Make sure to share this with your friends, but also be sure to share the video to show them how to play all of these tribes and why they're ranked where they are. Another huge thanks to all the pros that helped me make this tier list as unbiased as possible. And remember, this is a high MMR tier list, what you can expect being played at the highest level of Battlegrounds. If you enjoyed this content, all you have to do is subscribe. I'll try to get in one more high effort guide before I leave for vacation so you don't want to miss that. Peace.